want, wants to know, what was around before the Big Bang? Nothing was around before the Big Big Bang. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space and time together form a space-time continuum or manifold which is not flat, but curved by the matter and energy in it. I adopt the Euclidean approach to quantum gravity to describe the beginning of the universe. In this, ordinary real time is replaced by imaginary time, which behaves like a fourth direction of space. Mm -hmm. In the Euclidean approach, the history of the universe in imaginary time is a four-dimensional curved surface, like the surface of the Earth, but with two more dimensions. Jim Hartle and I proposed a no-boundary condition. The boundary condition of the universe is that it has no boundary. Okay. In order terms, the Euclidean space-time is a closed surface without add, like the surface of the Earth. One can regard imaginary and real time as beginning at the South Pole, which is a smooth point of space-time where the normal laws of physics hold. There is nothing south of the South Pole, so there was nothing around before the Big Bang. <laughs> the boundary condition of the universe is there is no boundary. Did so everyone's minds just go clear at that moment? <laughs> <laughs> like a Zen monk has just <laughs> enabled you to meditate truly for the first time. So Jen, I'm there nodding like I'm following him. He gave you a look at the end like, get it? Did you see that look he gave you? I was like, I got maybe 20% of where he was going. <laughs> so let's see if we can unpack this. What does he mean by imaginary time? Well, imaginary time is really, it doesn't mean made up or invented time. It, it literally means you, you invent a new time parameter, which is... I'm going to say it in math terms, the square root of minus one times the old time parameter. It's okay. just a math. The square root of minus one is the imaginary it's number. It's an imaginary number. It doesn't mean that it's made up or invented. And it's just a mathematical trick. It's a most unfortunate word for it. It is. That we gave it. It, it is, it, but it is a pretty odd, it is a pretty odd little trick. Well, technically, all numbers are imaginary, right? There's, you can't see a four. I don't four. know. That looks like one microphone. Yeah, but, that, that's <laughs> what, but you still need the word microphone. <laughs> that's not like, that's not A1. A it's not A1. The one represents well, the microphone, yeah. So in this mathematical trick, you're re-representing time as though it's actually space. That's ultimately what the mathematical trick does. So that when you do this in all of your mathematical equations, you literally couldn't tell what was time and what was space before, especially if you relabeled them to trick yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like a little game of, what do they call uh, it? The yeah. So then what, what you're doing is you're imagining that instead of space and time, that you're just in space, but a four-dimensional space. And that allows you to visualize um, certain aspects of the space-time. So what about then uh, there being nothing south of the South Pole? Right. So then if time... Oh, if well, first, you, we all agree you can't go south Right. And there's the nothing Pole. weird about that. You yeah. just go back again. So there is no... If you stay on the surface of the Earth, you don't ask the question, what's south of the South Pole? You just right. realize, oh, that's just an ill-posed question, and it's all completely right. compact. And so they would imagine entire space-time where as you move in time, this Euclidean time, you'd actually come looping back around again. It really is a hypothesis that is as yet unsubstantiated. She we don't said, know that that's Hawking true. Hawking made a hypothesis. Was only a hypothesis. Right? It's only a Did hypothesis. You hear this? And he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs>